So, yeah, Mark chapter 9, verse 33. I'm going to teach in a very fast pace because I want us to rejoice and sing and really just love the Lord afterwards. Mark chapter 9, verse 33. The Bible says, And Jesus sat down and called the twelve and said unto them, If any man desire to be first, he shall be the, he shall be the last of all, and he shall be the servant of all. What Jesus was saying was this. He says, there's a different way God measures greatness. And when God measures greatness, God measures greatness by the ability to serve. You know why I was laughing when I read that? Because I was reading this month, my Bible reading has been the book of Exodus. And I'm shocked. I'm shocked about how miracles do not change people. I'm shocked. Like, Pharaoh saw the ten wonders of God in Egypt. He still pursued Israel into the Red Sea. He, miracles don't change people. Israel themselves saw the wonders of God in the wilderness. They still were hard. They were stone-headed. They don't change people. What changes people is the word of God. You know what I'm saying is this? Because if you attend this church and you don't know you don't prioritize the word of God. Like, wake up in the morning, value Bible reading. Bible reading and adjusting to what you read. You can't go far as a Christian. You must prioritize the word of God. Many of you have phones that you don't have a Bible app on it. What? That's a useless phone. The first thing you must put on your phone or your computer are Bible map and Bible programming. And on your children's phones. See, <clears throat> when God answers your prayers, gives you all the miracle, how does that change your life? Read the Bible. People have all those things never change their lives. But the people that change their life, he, Jesus has asked disciples, he says, are you going to go now? He said, where, where can we go? He said, you have the words of eternal life. He says, we cannot go. We are under a word trap. He said, the word has caught us. He said, the word has caught us. Hallelujah. The word has caught us. Yeah. Uh, you will get the husband and leave the church. You will get the wife and go away. You'll become a millionaire and go. But when you catch the word, oh my God. The word transforms you from in out. Hey, glory to God. No wonder Paul says, as we behold his face in the mirror. He said, we have been transformed into the same image. Let me tell you something. When they talk about Bible study, they say, well, you know. When I don't read my Bible, I'll tell you what happens to me. There's a weakness I feel. Because, and I know what happens, because of all the things you hear, there's a fear. When I go to the Bible every morning, there's an, there's a, an assurance. There's an assurance. I don't even know how to pray without quoting the Bible. I mean, you watch me every morning. I don't know how to do that. Just, how do you pray without saying, because prayer is saying to God to do what he has said he will do. True prayer He's saying to God to do what he has said he's going to do. That's why when we pray, we say, Father, according to your word, because you said this. So, when we leave the prayer, we're not leaving that, will he hear or not? No. Before we pray, he said what he wants to do. You must pay attention. See, husbands and wives, you must have time. Not just say, I love you, I love you, kick and biscuit. No. Discuss the word of God. Call your children, have Bible study. Explain why I'm on holiday with my kids. Every day is Bible study. Oh, long Bible study. Long. My children say, I'm tired. I say, you have to learn. <laughs> well, you have to learn. When they say Disney World, by next year, 50% to be LGBT people. And they've removed CRK from schools. What are we going to teach them? Someone says, do you hate people that are homosexuals? Never. I love them. I love lesbians. I love homosexuals. What I dislike is the pushing of agenda to force it on other people. Yes, sir. What I also dislike is the Christians that makes us feel as if homosexuality is a special sin. Homosexuality. Christians will sleep with another person's wife. I sleep with another man. What's the difference? And they stoned them to death. Is that what your master did? 
I have friends that are homosexuals. No. We have conversations. The reason is that the day they want to change, who will they come to? But you. Self-righteousness. Meanwhile, meanwhile, what do you do? Praise God. Just remember, he that thinketh is standard, take heed. That's false. I'm not saying condole sin, but don't be an hypocrite. Hallelujah. So it's important. It's, an, it's very, very important. It's very important to be given to the word. And it's a power. See, you must have some good habits of going to YouTube, having some TV, and just say, I want to listen to a message on prayer. And just listen. Me, that I speak to you, I listen a lot. But the thing is, the reason why is that if you don't hear the word, your heart will be full of fear. You have no choice. Because that's all the word circulates. The word paints a narrative. It's over. Things are depressed. Things are finished. Things are this. That's the narrative of the world. Where does faith come from? Faith coming by hearing. You, you, you look at what the doctor said. You look at your child. You look at this. Fear will come in. Where do you find faith from? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what God has said. As a Christian, you must guide Bible study. You know when I got born again, there used to be a word. It's no longer popular. It's called quiet time. As, a matter, as soon as you meet yourself, you just say, Papa Sam, come. We just say, once you meet another brother in the Christ, you say, my brother, how was your quiet time? Yeah. That was how we greeted. How was your quiet time? Those that got born again, wow, know what I'm talking about. The new generation say, no, 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 no. We don't believe in religion. Quiet time religion. Okay. No wonder you, do, you cannot even count from Genesis to Revelation how many books are there. Those are when you come to church, like music service now. You will have games. Draw your sword. Yes. They will mention books in the Bible that if you don't remember, you don't know where they are. Yes. Zephaniah. Yes. Zephaniah, Zephaniah. Yes. Obadiah. Yes. Nahum. Praise God. Ask you, how many chapters are in the book of... How many chapters does Proverbs have? How many chapters are here? Those are things. Because, you know, it's amazing. Christians, we just want to do a lot of learning. And every Friday, let's go out. When will you just say, let's do a spiritual challenge? Let's just challenge ourselves. Prayer challenge. Not one-legged challenge. Prayer challenge. Praise God. And I'm saying this because you must be intentional. Because faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When Satan came to attack Jesus, all he said was, it is written. It is written. It's difficult to stand when you don't have the word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. If the word of God is boring to you, you have a big problem. It's a problem of value. You need to get new friends. Yeah? You need to get new friends. Someone say, friends? Yeah? You don't know when you have friends that just share Bible without knowing. They say, no, 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 this happened on Imagine. But I read yesterday. They didn't even plan to share. Yes. Praise God. So, Mark chapter 9, verse 33. So, the Bible says this. And once you read the Bible, you must learn that the Bible is superior to your thinking. Yes. It's something that this generation struggle with. The Bible is not an opinion. It's the truth. The Bible is not an opinion, it's the truth. Jesus did not say, I am one of them. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man cometh to the Father but by me. The Bible is the truth. So said, what's your opinion? My opinion is the Bible's opinion. Yes, sir. If I have an opinion and I discover the Bible says, anti that opinion, I will change my opinion to fit the Bible. Because I'm not wiser than God. God said this way, I said this way. Who am I? Is my head okay? Am I okay? Am I... You know, what, 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 what can be wrong with me? It's even good to know that I'm doing the wrong thing, but at least I know it's the wrong thing. And I say, what, what, what's, just, what, what's wrong with pornography? Pornography, just you looking. It's like a movie. It's like a movie. 
That's how the Spirit of God leaves people. Because you, you deceive yourself to the point your heart is lost. The Bible says, flee youthful lust. You know what youthful lust is? The desires of the flesh. That thing that wants to make you watch pornography. is a kid. You and someone that is not your wife, you will not be talking about sexual position. For what? You are just one step away. Because after theory, wouldn't there be practical? Experiment is coming. Oh Lord, you know, I have no friend like you. Praise God. Mark chapter, so, so I'm just saying, submit to the word. So if the word needs to fix something, let it fix it. How can Christian be talking to you? Yeah, virgin. Hey, virgin. No. Someone is confessing. I'm healed. He said, leave that one. Let's talk reality. What is reality? This is reality. What we're saying. What we're saying. That the life of God has been impacted to our spirits. That paralyzes sickness and diseases. That's reality. That none amongst us shall be sick. None amongst us shall be barren. That is reality. That our human nature has been suppressed. Hallelujah. Has been reconfigured by the impartation of divine life. Hey, that is reality. What is reality? Romans 8:11. That if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if it dwells within us, he took my cotton, he took quicken our mortal bodies. That is reality. There's no more, there's no bigger reality than the big reality of the word of God. They say he's speaking tongues. My own has not gotten there. And when does he get there? It says, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with your tongues. I didn't write it. Jesus said so. Yes, Praise God. Yeah. Mark chapter 9, verse 33. And it came to Capernaum. And being in the house, they asked him. And he asked them rather, what is it that you disputed amongst yourself? And they held their peace. For by the way, they were arguing and disputing amongst themselves who should the greatest be and when he had the question this is this is the beauty this is the beauty of followership when you come to a church it's not let me tell you something what will grow you spiritually is not coming to a church it will start something what grows you spiritually is the relationship you form the reason why is that teaching all this i teach now they are called generals general teachings when you went to university you got that thing these are GST 1 or GST 2 or 2. But as you grow, you do your course specific. When God wants to grow you, with, because you are in a general class, you can't get course specific. But once someone mentors you spiritually, you will do something. Come. That's not to do it. You'll be taught. Discipleship is connected to followership. And who you follow the times what follows you. When you see people that can pray, watch it. They got close to one that could pray. You don't learn prayer by reading. Prayer is done by practice. That's the problem. Because people think that church is an end in itself. Church attendance is not an end in itself. It's a means to an end. When you come, when you come, you must be able to say, where are the relationships I should be plugged into that can jack me up, that can pull me up spiritually? Look at this scripture. The Bible says they were arguing. And just can I say, that argument was a point of correction. Because, but just because I'm not known to teach them, because I'm not taught them everything. But as they argue, that, hmm, I see something. Let's look at this. Praise God. So when you come to church like this, you must be intentional that I want to build relationships. Because I know what I'm going to. The church is a platform to build relationships. But it's the relationship that will change you. Let me give an example. How many of you here can remember the three messages that change your life spiritually? If you can remember, hands up. The three messages that change your life spiritually. If you can remember, hands up. Okay, one. 
I have a few hands. Maybe about 10. Put that. How many of you can remember one person that changed you spiritually? Raise up your hands. Did you see that? People change people. Yeah. Did you see the hands? That's the power of relationship. Just because you not say follow, you don't say go to a Bible school, I'll make you say follow me. Your making is in the choice to follow me. And when you see people that follow, you see the training. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. So the Bible says this. So they began to argue that we should be the greatest. And Jesus Christ said to them, he says, the person that wants to be the greatest is going to be the servant of all. The reason why Jesus Christ said was this. He was referring to this tip rule. He just was saying that, hey, this is the tip rule. He says, he says, God has his own way of measurement. Man has his own way. You know, this tip rule on my own side is measured in inches. On your own side is measured centimeters. There is a way that man measures that God does not measure. Because when man measures greatness, man talks about bank accounts. Man talks about social media following. But when you read through the Bible, all the great people in the Bible, God did not see them that way. Do you know that the Pharisees and Sadducees were the elites of their time? They were the richest, they were the biggest. Did you notice that in the Bible, you didn't really find their names? They were categorized because of their insignificance as Pharisee and Sadducee. Yet, Peter, a fisherman, was mentioned. Not just mentioned, mentioned many times. Because in God's book, he had weights. But all the Pharisees and Sadducees, only two of them were mentioned. Nicodemus and Gamaliel. Yes. And they were mentioned in relationship with Jesus. Yes. Even Pontius Pilate. The only reason why I remember that Pilate was a relationship to Jesus Christ. Are you here? Yes. Just one man appeared in the Bible. Bible called it Simon, the, the Simon of what? Of Cyrene. Why? As Jesus carried the cross, he was the one that offered to help carry the cross. Where were the professionals? Where were the elites? Where were the biggies? Where were the doziers? Where were those? Because the way heaven writes his own fob list is not the way God writes his own fob list. Earth and heaven write differently. God says, the way I write my fob list is this. Whoever will be the greatest, let him be the servant of all. Be careful. So that the real things don't elude you. So when you read through the Bible, you will see people just small, small, Aquila and Priscilla, just a couple. Aquila and Priscilla, you will hear a woman called Dokas. Tabita. You know, you will hear simple, simple names. But the big people, you never hear their names. Because there's a way God measures this thing. There's a way that God measures this. There's a way that God measures this greatness. And he told us, he said, in this kingdom, whoever is going to be great is going to be the servant of all. And guess what? You think that God has stopped writing. No. There's a book in heaven. He's still writing. Is your name there? He's going to write what you're doing right now. Is there, what are you doing today that is worthy of mention in heaven? It's not as if you're not doing anything. But what are you doing today that is worthy of mention in heaven? So, I think, you, know, I, you know, so as we teach on service, one of the things, one of the things I had to ask myself was this. Why does God want us to serve? Because he has an assignment. I said, no. I said, God, you're very smart. If you want something to be done, the last message you give is human being. Because human beings have mood, have emotion, have life issues, have children, have husband, has wife, has money problems, has traffic problems, has feeding problems, has rest problems. Why do you give it to us? Why not just send angels that have no feeling? So it almost seemed to me that every time God asks us to serve, he wasn't really thinking about us and about himself. Because if he wants the job done, he will ask angels to do it. He was thinking about you. So question, what exactly is God thinking about me when he asks me to serve? Number one, because God uses service to expand us. 
So every time God wants to expand a man, he gives him a service. Ask Moses. Mo- Mo- God wanted to... <laughs> God wanted to expand Moses. Say, Moses, come. Let me send you to Pharaoh. God uses service to expand us. That demand to lead something, to evangelize, to expand in prayer, that is God's call to expand you. Because all of us come in capacities. Where am I, Jerry Count? All of us come in capacities. I want the smallest one first. This is how you are. All of us come in capacity. This can be your capacity. And God is thinking, I want to move you from this capacity to this capacity. And how is God going to move you from this capacity to this capacity? What he's going to do is to give you service. Why? Service expands you. That's why he told them, Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. You can put on the screen. He said, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. He said, there's something about serving and following. That turns you from fishing fish to fishing men. Capacity has changed. Because initially, they were all fishing fish. Small value life. He says, when you follow me, I will turn you to what? A fisher of men. Everybody has potential. But what turns potential to reality is service. Let me say something to you. There are certain things you can never learn until you start serving. There are certain potentials you will know you never have until you start serving. Because service is like a pipe. It will suck it out of you. There are some things, see, there are some qualities you never have until you have children. Yes or no? They will bring it out. You're like, hey, so I'm like this. Look at Joshua. Look at Joshua. Look at Joshua. How did God expand? Joshua was just a houseboy. Carry blades. Carry knife. Carry blade. Carry knife. Go and break tablecloth. Go and break the. How did God expand Joshua? It's true service. The Bible says, as Joshua continually waited on Moses, his capacity was expanding. The question is this Are you running away from service? Do you know you're running from expansion? The second reason why God asks us to serve is this. Because service has the power to turn your pain into power. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Let's look at that quickly. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Why does God have see? Let me say something. Ever look up, look up here. Either you are born again or not born again, you will have pain and hurt. Can I hear an amen? amen. If you like, don't say an amen, it's life. Pain is a fact of life because we live in a fallen world. But God never promised us you will never have pain. What God promised us is this. I will give you comfort in your pain. I will turn your pain into a message. See what it says here. He says, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Verse 4. He says this. Who comforted us in what? Did he say, I will make you avoid tribulation? Mm-mm. It says you will comfort. When you lose the business capital, it will come and comfort you. Hey. Hey, hey. When you go through the breakup, you will come and comfort you. When you go through, it will come. So that you will not go through things. Forget. What it says is that what I will do is that I will come and comfort you. Because many of you, you know, have you not seen people that say, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this. They are running away from life because they are running away from pain. If you run away from pain, you will run into a graveyard. Because the graveyard is the only place where people that do not have pain exist. Oh, you didn't hear that. The graveyard is the only place where people that don't have pain exist. As long as you're in this world, there will be challenges. It says this comfort but what does God do this is what God does when you go through pain and you begin to serve with your pain God is a master in turning your mess into a message so you've gone through this business loss where you lost 100 million God says if you can serve me if you can steward your pain I can turn your mess into a message. I can turn your misery into ministry. Hey, come on now. 
I can turn what? Your misery into me. And that's why sometimes the best people to talk on something are people that have gone through it. Yes. You know, when, when, when you see people, maybe someone lost his dad or mom, and you ask so, you know, someone like, um, maybe someone like Pastor, um, Pastor, uh, maybe Pastor Femi George, you know, or you ask you to go and see the person, you know, they go there, they say, oh, you know, my, oh my God, I'm so, I'm so heartbroken by what's happened. Can I help? I just brought you this envelope. Someone says, my father died, you brought an envelope. They've not been there. <laughs> when you've lost people, is the envelope? The first thing is that when someone dies around you, you don't even agree it's true. Oh, yes, right? Only those that have been true can answer. The reason why I can tell you is because I've lost my parents. So, what happens is, is the comfort I've received. I turn into ministry. I cannot use to comfort somebody else. When you have not lost money, you can't pray for someone that lost money in business. Ah, when you have lost money in business, the first question you ask is, whose money is it? Ah, because you know that the, when you, whose money is this? Does that mean how we should pray? <laughs> Are you hearing me? Yes, Whose money is it? That's it. The comfort we've experienced. We may comfort another. See, this white service is powerful. This white service is... See, you don't understand. When you say, you know, the Lord bless me. When you struggle with poverty and you start sharing, the people that came from where you came from we start shouting. All of you now look like lucky people. But where you came from is not lucky. Some of you are the sure. Huh? Oh, Coco. <laughs> are you here? When you go and buy clothes, ask Fino. You buy clothes. When you buy clothes, you get to Katangwa early. Because if you get to Katangwa late, you know, you'll be getting left over. So as they open the bail, eh? first discharge. As they just say, pick the, as they just hey, 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 you pick everything. When you now tell someone that is living in all those Paco houses, wooden houses, and tell them tell them your story. They can identify. Because all of a sudden, what should hurt you is now become ministry. Uh, have you heard the story of a woman called Joyce Mayer? Joyce Mayer, one of the biggest female American speakers in the whole world. And she said, from age 10, my father began to rape and sleep with me. And slept with her from age 10 to I think age 16. He said, what makes me effective to minister to abuse people is this. When I talk, I understand their language. The problem is that you are covering your pain instead of turning to ministry. So, it still hurts you because you are covering your pain. Meanwhile, the, your mess can be turned into a message. Your pain can become ministry. Should I prove it to you? Let me help you. Do you know that Paul... All the, most of the pieces you saw that he wrote, what did he write them? He wrote them when he was in prison. He was in pain. They didn't let him go anywhere. They accused him wrongly. That was where he wrote the epistles. Question, which one has impacted us more? The journeys he had when he was alive or the epistles he wrote when he was in prison? God used more of his pain than his strength. All the church that Paul started has all collapsed. All the believers I minister to are all dead. But today, Paul is still ministering to us through the pain. So, when I was if you read him, you say that I would have come, but that's what I'm writing. I would have come. He thought this is the bot. He didn't understand the bot was the main ministry. He didn't understand. He said, I lost 100 million business. That 100 million can become your ministry. How you begin to walk with that? That heartbreak, see, this, this delay in childbirth can become a ministry. But the thing is that we are so selfish that we want to fix it first before we minister to other people. The last thing is this. Uh, 
Why is service important? So your service can feel your success. Your pain can feel your success. Why is service important? Because service is a seed. It's what? A seed. Service carries in its rewards for the future. Let me show you that scripture quickly. Let me show you scripture quickly. Oh, wow. 1 Corinthians, no, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Hebrews 6, verse 9 and 10, quickly. And I need two people to come on this. Uh, uh, I need two people to come here. Two, two, two people to come here. Two, there are just two persons to come here. See what the Bible says. It says, well, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you. What are the better things? The things that what? Accompany what? It says, Paul says, there are some, if you get born again, there are some things that accompany salvation. Are, are you hearing me? He said, there are some things. So, yes, I'm just born again. Mm -mm. There are some things that accompany salvation. Thus we speak. What is it? Verse 10. What is it? Verse 10. He says, for God is not unrighteous to forget what? Your work and labor of love. When they say, let's go for evangelism, you should be there. It's work and labor of love. Let's go to become a soldier. You should be there. Let's lead men's fellowship. You should be there. Because God will not forget. I said, book has been opened. Book is open now. It says, God is not unrighteous to forget. First, first Corinthians 15, 58. First Corinthians 15, 58. Quick. Brother at the back. Amen. Therefore, my beloved, be ye steadfast, be your movable, always about. Why does it be steadfast? It's easy for you to serve God and shift after some time. It's a normal thing. So he warned you ahead of time and say, hey, always abounding. Always abounding. He said, be steadfast, be movable, always abounding in the work of God. Why? For as much as you know that your labor in the Lord. See, it is beauty and glory to be able to serve God with your life. To be able to stand. You are a senior executive oh, as a full grown man. I am an usher. And he said, this way. What a glory. What a glory. See, what, you know, the beauty is that as an executive director, you say, this way. And the officer in your office says, hey, he sees that just the Lord of your life. Hey. They've told you that you have missed something, you have missed this and this, and you leave all your miss here and there. You come to the house of God. Welcome to church. Welcome to the, They don't even greet you. It doesn't matter. It's not about them. It's about him. It says, always abounding in the work of God. Look at the choir members. Woo! Always abounding in the word of God. Because, can I say something to you, sir? Can I say something to you? Something must use you. Something must use you. If God does not use your flesh, will use you. That's the problem with some men. They have nothing using them. So, an, end, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Some of you, you know, um, Billy Graham said, all men will be tempted. He says, all men are tempted, but all temptation come to idle men. He said, all men are tempted, but all temptation come. Some of you, you are too jobless for Satan not to tempt you. I'm telling you, you will just get home and the demon is waiting for you. Praise God. This is your labor. What will it be like? You to like, I want to start leading itself. I want to be helping to feed the poor. What will it be like? I say, Sunday, next Sunday, I'll get early to church and begin my friends. What will it be like if you can take next level status and share on your status? Always sharing cake, sharing food. Sharing. When will you share next level for your friends? Serving God with it. Proverbs 11, verse 25. Last scripture. Who is coming up? Where are my volunteers that are coming up? Thank you, my brother. I have one. Oh, good. Are we complete? There are two. Please just come here. Just face us. Let's read. The Bible says, The Libra soul shall what? And he that watereth shall what? The Bible says this. It said, Paul planted Apollo what? what? Did you notice he didn't say I water? There are some things in your life you can't do for yourself. That how God will do it for you is I will raise somebody to do it for you. Yes or no? Yes, sir. He said, Apollo watereth. 
There are some things you can't do for yourself that is in the hand of somebody else. Where's my water? I need one more. Take. Take. And this guy, this guy, I don't know if I'm meeting for the first time. He wants to be watered in business. All he's been praying for is 100 million, but he doesn't have it. Oh, no, no, hold on. He did this guy. All he's been praying for is 100 million. He doesn't have it. This guy is praying for something else in business. And you know what God will do? All of them have water. But the way God has designed it, you cannot water yourself. The way it's designed, you cannot water yourself. So what God will do is that for this guy to have what he wants, he has to water somebody else. He, cannot, he has to water somebody else. So assumption he has watered somebody else. And this one is praying for 100 million. What will God do? Once he has fulfilled the requirement of watching somebody else, God raises somebody. Open, open, open. God raises somebody that will water him, pour it on his head. Gradually. And as he's pouring it, he also is praying. He will raise somebody else that will water him. You are watching sparingly. I'm watching you grossly. You have to water him very well. Water him very well. Don't worry about his clothes. He's anointed water. Praise God. See, see, listen. Listen. He that watereth shall also grow. The question is that, are you listening to me? The question is that, what you want, what have you made it happen for? Uh, uh, off mic, off mic, off mic. What you are praying for, who have you made it happen for? And what the Bible says, he that water, 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 water. He that water it shall also be what? What? You are praying to have a wife or husband. Who have you been a bridge to their own wife or husband? Even when they tell you I like your friends, say that's their business. I don't know. I don't know. But you want someone else to take your own business their business. I, 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 are you here today? Once the contract is not your turn, and it, it, the contract is furniture, but you don't do furniture, but your friend does furniture. He's going to say, a friend, I've seen something. Though. No, no, no. That's his business. What, what concern? Is that what bought me here? Is he going to present me here? What you don't realize that he that water it. Water, water, water. Shall also be what? Be water. He that water it shall also be water. You know the problem? Let me tell you the problem with human beings. We love this principle though, but this is what we do. This is what we want to do as human beings. Let's face ourselves and be watching each other. And that's why you get disappointed. Because God did not say, the person you water will water you back. He says, all you have to do is water, 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 water. He says, all you have to do is water, 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 water. All you have to do is water. He said, all you have to do is water. The person that water, you leave it alone. God will raise up the person by himself. All of a sudden, are you here, somebody? You are busy using bottle. This person is host that they will bring tanker host. And the person will be, will be spraying you. But what God wants you to do first is to what? Water. See what it says, Bible verse. And he that watereth shall also. Is that not why you're struggling? Because you're so absorbed in yourself. You think so much about yourself. The only time you want to water is when you see a virtual return. And even when you water, you hold them emotionally in their mind. You remember what I did for you. Yeah. My brother, you didn't water, you just mortgage. Yeah. That one is mortgage. You see how they hold on it. When you water, you release. You release. Either water it. Is it not the same thing? When you come, they say, do this, do this. If I tell you that, praise the Lord, that tomorrow we're hosting Oba Sanjo, Dangote, good luck, these are the winning 10 ushers. People that have not ushered before. You will see them with your shoes. 
Pastor, I actually was ushering in London before I came back to Nigeria. Big, big, and, and the reason I'm telling you that because, because when it comes to VIP ushering, if you can Google me, Google me, Google me, Pastor. Oh, in, the, in, the, in the birthday of the coin, the, not, not the one, the, there's one, the last birthday, I was among the top row ushers. So the reason I'm saying that when it comes to the VIP, like the president, I'm called, Pastor, me, me, let me handle them for you. You will be blessed. He that water it. That's the word. We're in church, we want to help people that don't, don't have money for school. We're asking, give your tithes and your offerings. Do you think of watering? Because whatever you make happen in the house of God, God will make happen for you. When you ask did your tithes and your offering demand pressure from you, he that water it shall also be watered. Did you read about the story about a woman called Dockers when she died? They told Peter, they said, sir, she must wake up. If she doesn't wake up, the widows are finished. She's the one that takes care of them. When Peter heard that the anointing rose, he that watered. You are coming to church with empty car, passing all the empty people in your house, sleeping, snoring on Sunday morning. What will it take you to call them and say, I'm taking your children to church? I'm taking you to church. What will it take you to say, Today I will serve in church? My house will be house fellowship. I will not be consistent as a titan and a giver. What would it cost you? I will be sending next level to 10 of my friends every day. What will it cost you? Nothing. You're not saying, Father, have you forgotten me? You've forgotten. He that water it. Water, 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 water. I, I, you know the thing? You know, you, know, you, know, you know what he's doing is even making me teach some more. He that waters sparingly. Shall be watered by sparing. Some of you just say, let me just do it sparingly. God say, well done. He will also give you sparingly. But when you become aggressive, I say, all oh, 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 the water. Praise God. Let's start up and pray.